Welcome to Worship at Good Shepherd Christian Church. We are delighted to have you worshiping with us. Whether you are worshiping online or you are here in the sanctuary with us, we know that we are connected by spirit. So we come today, our first Sunday of Epiphany, and we bring in the light, the light of Christ to remind us that in our world, we are led by God's light always. It guides us, gives us hope, gives us peace, reminds us that no matter what's going on in the world, that God is there with us. So I want to give us a couple of announcements so that you are ready for worship today. If you are worshiping online, I invite you, go get a small bowl of water and have it with you. It could be just a small little dish, um, and you'd only need to fill it up maybe a third of the way. But if you will have that with you, so it's okay to pause right now. Go pause, get yourself a small dish of water. For everybody that's worshiping in person, our deacons um, were handing out little jars that have water. So I hope that each family unit has one of those. If you don't, please go back in the, to the back and the deacons will give you one. That's going to be important for what we do and talk about today. I also want to lift up that right after worship, you probably saw the announcement that we are going to be having a book discussion. And so we are safely making that hybrid. Hybrid means online as well as in person. We will be in the meeting room with our masks on, air purifier. But I, we also have, through a kind donation, purchased a 360 camera and a 360 mic for when we do meetings in person for everybody who is online to be able to see those people. So um, we will be doing the meeting both in person and over GoToMeeting using our regular GoToMeeting link. So for everybody that's worshiping with us, you're on YouTube right now, right after the meeting, please link in to GoToMeeting. You can find the code for it in our mini that is in our regular newsletter or by going through our website to check on the mini. We're gonna talk about the five loaves, two fish, and 12 volunteers and meal ministry. We've completed the book and so many groups are starting to talk about that and what that means, what ideas we have for our own meal ministry, where that prayerfully takes us for the welcome table. So please join me for that conversation if you can. And if not, we will schedule another that will be with the board, the guiding board. Um, and if you can't make any of those, please come to me and say, I have ideas because we want to hear from everybody. Also want to lift up that this Tuesday, Bible study is starting back up and it will also be hybrid. So that will be in person as well as over GoToMeeting. They will be wrapping up their conversation on Psalms and then starting next week, um, going into Kings 1 and 2. So again, regular GoToMeeting link will safely bring you there from home remotely. Um, or you can come in person with safe distancing and with masking. And then on Wednesday, we are starting something new, a new offering for you. During the lunch hour, I don't know how many people have the traditional lunch hour anymore, but between 12.15 and 12.45, so just a quick half hour, we are offering contemplative prayer. You can do this hybrid as well, in person, either in the fellowship hall, spaced out, or online on GoToMeeting. It'll be a time to quiet the soul, to sit in the sacred, and just let whatever comes over you come over you. And if you've never done this before, it's worth a try. It's the new year, it's epiphany. We're asking for God to connect with us. And all through Advent, we talked about making room in our hearts and our lives. So this is a great way to make room. So please mark your calendars, Wednesdays, 12.15 to 12.45. I'll lead this. We'll have a little short time of connection. And then we'll do a contemplative prayer silence practice together. So join in. See what it's about. Even if it gives you the heebie-jeebies, how could I be silent? Just try it. And I, I guarantee you, by week four, you will not have the heebie-jeebies. You will actually be yearning for more of that. So I hope you'll join me on Wednesdays. From that, we come 
as I said earlier, to the first Sunday of Epiphany, where the wise sages have been led by a star, wise sages from actually warring countries. They did not get along nor like each other, but the sages knew more. They trusted in God. They learned to find unity, to hear one another, and to stand in their differences for the goodness of love. So I invite our worship leader, Merle, to come forward and lead us with our opening prayer. Most wonderful God, foolish and flawed though we are, we too delight in your beloved Son. As in his name we gather in the house of many praises, may the heavens be open for us that we may catch a glimpse of that light and love that transforms our common days with a beauty not of our making. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. I invite you to stand as we sing together, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, the third chapter, verses 15 through 17, and verses 21 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation, and all, the, all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to un untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, close to his threshing floor, and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus had also been baptized and was praying, the, heavens was, the heaven was open and the Holy Spirit depended upon descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Thank you, Merle. I'm 
I almost forgot I had that on. It's becoming second nature. That's great. We come on this Epiphany Sunday. We come recognizing that there is more than what we know. Now, I don't know if you can see. I'm going to see if our camera can pan out a little bit. If you can see the beautiful river of fabric that we have showing our sanctuary to match with Jesus' baptism. I thank the worship committee or the worship team for putting this together. It's beautiful. We come knowing that epiphany means signs, showing us manifestations of God in our midst. And this happens over and over and over again through the life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. It happened with the star in Bethlehem, right? Leading the way, letting us know that this was no ordinary birth. And it happens again today, the day of Jesus' baptism. So we have a bowl of water here on the table. Yours does not need to be this big. You can just have a little bowl. But we bring water because we know that we are baptized by water. And so I'm not going to presume that everybody worshiping with us today is baptized. Some are and some aren't. For those that are, I want you to remember your baptism. For those that aren't, I want you to bring all your questions. I want you to bring all of the things that you are longing for or hesitant about church but still have water with you. As disciples of Christ, when we are baptized, we often do immersion. That is our custom in our denomination. Immersion means immersing, going in the water. So behind me, we have our baptistry. And so it is filled, usually warm, although I've been warned that there were some occasions where that did not happen. And so emergency helpers came together, and actually God, as God always is, bound people together in that memory and that experience and made it good. And what we do is the pastor, who has been ordained and blessed as a laying on of hands, is in the water. I often sprinkle in the water, and so do many other pastors, a little bit of holy water. I have some from the actual same Jordan River, that Jesus was baptized in, and holy water is blessed. And so I sprinkle a little bit in. I say a prayer. Often we've worked with our folks that are going through baptism to teach them and have them decide for their own. And then we lay them back into the water, washing clean of what is old and lifting them up fresh and renewed to what is new. Pretty great, right? Well, I have a confession. I've never been immersed. <gasps> Shocking! Because I grew up Methodist. And in the Methodist church, we sprinkled. Does that mean that I'm not really baptized, everybody? You're being kind and nobody's yelling out saying, no. Oh. Yeah, it, I still am baptized and we honor other baptisms. I was baptized and I was confirmed the same day. Confirmed means I confirmed my beliefs. A lot like what disciples do when we do adult baptism, we make the choice and say, yes, I want to be baptized. Why do you think Jesus was baptized? Do you think he wasn't holy beforehand? No, that's not it, right? There's actually controversy around this and, and a lot of controversy in the early church. Why did Jesus need to be baptized? Why did he come to John? But what was John doing? Do you remember the, the early Advent scriptures that we hear all the time? John says, prepare the way, right? Prepare the way of the Lord. So he was baptizing all kinds of people in the river. And then people said, are you the one? Are you the Messiah, John? And John the Baptist said, no, I am baptizing and preparing. But the one who will come he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And I think John says, as we read, I am not even worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. He will baptize with spirit and with fire. Hmm. Okay, 
So today's scripture that Merle read for us, is it just about the mechanics of what happened in Jesus' baptism? What else took place? What do you think is the theme from that gospel? What did we notice? What are the details around the surroundings of Jesus' baptism? I noticed Jesus went and prayed. He had already been baptized, but he was praying. Did you notice that? Jesus had a really strong prayer life. He would go often to prayer. In fact, when the multitudes of the peoples were so common or so much in numbers, he would retreat and he would pray. He stayed connected with God all the time. You know, it's funny. I was doing something yesterday. I was uh, painting at our new house. And, you know, when you paint, it's so lovely. You watch the paint on the walls. You're like, it looks so good. And then you have to clean up, right? So I'm washing out the roller, and I'm washing out the brush, and it is taking forever. I used a lot of paint, apparently. Um, and I'm doing it, and I'm running the water, waiting for it to run clear, and it is never running clear. And I said, Dear God, please make these clean. And then I giggled because I thought, did I just baptize the paintbrush? <laughs> Dear God, please make us clean. Isn't that sort of what we're saying? Dear God, make us clean. And so there's something more that happens in baptism. What else did you notice in the scripture? Was God present? In Jesus' baptism? I see nodding heads. God came in the form, the earthly form of a dove. What does the dove mean for us? Does the dove mean, watch out, there's warning and war coming? No, the dove means peace, right? Peace and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was present for Jesus' baptism. And I wonder, when we're baptized, some people say, well, I don't really feel anything. Nothing really happened. But here's what I do know. I know that Pastor Jill and I were both ordained. And when we were ordained, we had to go through a lot of, a lot of study, a lot of practice. We had to go through all kinds of sitting with committees and being a pastor, as, as basically I'll say student pastoring, um, but we also had to have the blessing of the committees who were both the ones who encourage and the gatekeepers. And when we were approved for ordination, like any other pastor in our, our United Church of Christ and Disciples of Christ, when, and many other denominations, when we were approved, there was an ordination. And in that ordination, there were charges and blessings, but there was a laying on of hands and it usually starts from the regional minister. That would be uh, our bishop in other denominations' terms. And then all the other ordained clergy laying on of hands on our head or on our shoulder. I've, I've seen some ceremonies recently where they have masks on and they're very much at a distance. But a laying on of hands. And you know who laid on the hands of them when they were ordained? Were the previous pastors and regional ministers and bishops. And you know who did the laying on of hands before that for those people? The previous ministers and bishops and church leaders, etc. and etc. and etc. All the way down, all the way down to the 12 disciples who were with Jesus, who was baptized by John, and the Holy Spirit, God, was present. So when I was painting yesterday, you know, there's a lot of prep work with, that goes with that too, a whole lot of taping everywhere, right? But we also had taken, you know, most of the panels off, the little electric box panels, light switches, plugs. But there were two that were being stinkers. And even though we took the little plastic panel off, one of them was still the old landline. It was still wired and connected. So you couldn't get the panel off without disconnecting the wires. 
The other one was for cable running in, which could also be used for your, your uh, internet. But it was a stinker too when we had to unscrew something and disconnect it. The Holy Spirit. I think when a pastor lays their hands on somebody when they're baptized, we usually say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or in the name of the Creator, the Sustainer, and the Holy Spirit. When that happens, I believe the Holy Spirit is with us. The Holy Spirit was at my ordination. The Holy Spirit was at my baptism. The Holy Spirit was at Pastor Jill's ordination, and the Holy Spirit was at her baptism. And all the way down to the 12 disciples and to Jesus, the Holy Spirit is there. But you're like, well, Pastor Nina, why did you just tell us about your panels and your painting? Well, because I also thought about, we have to be connected to receive the Holy Spirit, to notice that something happened in our baptism which we can connect with at any time. But if we're not connected, the Holy Spirit can show up all she wants. But if we're not plugged in, then we're not really channeling it. We're not really making that full circuit, are we? So when people say, well, nothing changed for me when I was baptized, maybe not. Maybe they need to come back to their baptism. And maybe there needs to be a reconnection and making room in our hearts, in our lives, and in our church. Maybe you've been plugged in and that Holy Spirit moves all the time in your life or occasionally in your life. What I do know is that it doesn't mean that we have a get-out-of-jail-free card. It doesn't mean that our life is all unicorns and rainbows and fluffy kittens. It does mean that in challenging times, God is with us. God is with us. And we are never alone. It means for every person who's been baptized, you are making the recognition that you are a child of God and that you will live up to that. Maybe not perfectly. I'll, I'll say absolutely not perfectly. But you will live up to holding on to your end of the connection as a child of God. And for all those that are considering it, really disciples theology is that you're already a child of God. It's just you making the connection, you making the confirmation that you trust the beloved and will follow the beloved. So today I have water in front of me. You all have water in front of you. So I want you to gently open your jar or have your bowl near and I want you to remember, we're baptized in the name of three things. So first, everybody have their jar open, their bowl there. You're going to use your hand, if you're comfortable, your loved one's hand, all of your hands. I want you to dip a finger in your bowl. We were baptized in the name of God the Creator. I want you to kind of shake off your drips a little bit over your bowl. And on your hands, I want you to make a line. Baptize. In the name of God, the creator, you can rub it over a couple of times if you want. God who created and made you as you are. With all your quirky beautifulness, all your delightful personality that's challenging and lovely, all your gifts, all your doubts, all of your growing, all of your years before you and the years ahead of you. You are beloved, a child of God, created by a God who loves you. And then we say, go ahead and dip your finger in a second time. You were baptized, and it dripped off. You were also baptized, and make a line going across the other way. In the name of Jesus Christ, the sustainer. Jesus Christ, the sustainer. He's not a lucky rabbit's foot. He's one who walks with you, who sees in you beauty, healing, forgiveness, mercy, compassion, who says, feed the hungry, 
clothe the naked, visit the imprisoned, heal the sick, and I am with you always. I am with you always. And then thirdly, again, dip your finger in your water. You are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and make one more line going down. The Holy Spirit that moves and breathes as wind, fire, filling us, swirling around us, sometimes pushing us, sometimes calming us as breath, letting us sit in the presence of God, giving us wisdom of God in our own time. Boy, if we took in all the wisdom at one time, I think it would blow our hair back so much that we would fall the opposite direction and probably disintegrate but it gives us little bits of wisdom as a gentle breeze that we can take on our journey. You are beloved. What did God's voice say parting from the heavens to Jesus Christ? It was an epiphany moment, a manifestation of God with us. God in God's voice, you can imagine a big, bellowing, manly voice, or you can imagine a soft, kind, calm male voice. You can imagine a soothing female voice. I don't really think it matters if there's a gender. Perhaps God does not even have a gender. We can discuss that another time. But perhaps it's a voice, whatever was said, was you are my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Children of God, You are God's child, beloved, with whom your God, your Savior, is well pleased. Know that there is more than what we can see or what we can define with our senses. Know that there is a God who shines throughout us. Make room. Make room in your heart. Make room in your life. Make room in this church for the Holy Spirit to move and lead and guide us. Remember your baptism, or for those who have not been baptized but want to talk with me about that, please do. I welcome your questions. I welcome your challenges. I welcome your doubts. And I welcome your readiness when you're there. But I do not put that on you, for that is between you and God. For all who have said yes, Remember, you have taken Jesus Christ as the living Son of God, who is your personal Savior, and that you believe in him, are faithful to him, and will love one another and love God more than anything else in this whole world. God bless you, for you are loved, and God is well pleased. Amen. I invite you to stand and we'll sing just the first verse of what was your vow and vision. Beloveds, 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 we come together in a time of prayer today. We come together holding one another, holding ourselves in our own discernment 
as people, as beloved children of God. And we come together holding those we don't know, those we know and don't like, those we aren't sure about. We bring our questions, we bring our pain, our fears, our joys, our grief. And we come together in this moment of prayer. So we hold families who are grieving this week. We have sent those out via our prayer chain. And just a reminder that you can send in an email prayer request at any point through our website. And a reminder that there is an email prayer chain and a phone prayer chain. And if you want to participate in those, please contact the church office so that we can share that information with you. So that we can be holding one another in prayer. So as we approach God together in prayer, know that we see you and we love you and we are offering prayer for God's world, for the ways that God is pleased. And sometimes we might think, pleased? How could God be pleased with this mess? God is pleased because we offer compassion and love to one another. And that is a sign of baptism, of living out those promises. So let us approach God together in prayer. Loving and gracious God, you call us beloved. Beloved children. That's easy to Imagine with Jesus, but us? Me? All of us in this room, all of us watching online, beloved? Yes. Yes, you say, beloved, receive this gift of spirit, this breath of life. Yes, you say, beloved. You say that you are pleased with us, O God. So be with us as we seek to remember in the waters of life that you claim us and call us your own. That in the generations we are surrounded by witnesses by witnesses who know the gift of your spirit through breath and water. We are connected through generations. We are created and redeemed and sustained. Even when we don't act like it, even when we're not sure about it, you are with us. And we give thanks today We seek to make room, to open ourselves to your claim and your call. We seek to live in this community in ways that offer compassion and hope in this world. Because we know that you are pleased. And so we seek to respond. So in this time, O God, we lift up to you those who are grieving, those who are hurting, those who are sick, those who are afraid, those who cannot pray for themselves. We lift up those who are in leadership and those who are far from it. We pray for the world, for the places that are especially broken and hurting. We long for your love to offer repair and healing. 
and so be with us. Let your spirit settle upon us in each breath that we take, in each sip of water. Be with us that we might be your people in this time and in this place, empowering future generations to share your love. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray, sharing the words that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we've talked about baptism, about water, and how water is made holy by God. And I'm going to use some hand sanitizer, because washing my hands in this bowl of water would be great, except I don't have any soap. So We know that God offers us cleansing, redemption, hope, and love. And we come to this table just as we come to water to experience that redemption and that hope and that love. We come to this table knowing that we are beloved, even if we aren't sure, even if we aren't acting beloved, we are. We come to this table to receive that assurance and to be empowered to live as God's people in the world, to be nourished, to live as God's people in the world. And so we come to this table to remember that our Lord Jesus, who was baptized and blessed and called by God, gathered friends, and he sat at table with them often. And on several occasions in particular, he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them and said, take and eat, this is my body, broken for you. As often as you do this, remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup and he poured it out for them and said, drink from this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant, which is offered for you for forgiveness. As often as you do this, remember me. We pray for the bread and the cup today with a prayer written by Don Taylor. Dear God, as we come to the Lord's table, we give you thanks for the direction your voice gives us. Open our eyes to the messages you are sending us through everyday events. Grant us the wisdom to immediately recognize when you are telling us something. Open our ears so we will know when you are speaking to us so we can act appropriately on what you are saying. As we take the bread and cup, we pray that you would open our mouths to spread the love you give us to others so they may be drawn closer to you. Amen. And now we partake together of the body of Christ and the cup of blessing.
Dear ones, here at this table, we have lots of little reminders. Lots of little reminders. The, the flame, the small flame that reminds us that the light of Christ shines in the world. We have bread and juice that remind us that God infuses even the things that we eat with love. A cross that reminds us of Jesus' death and resurrection and water. Now here's the thing about water. I want to remind you that the earth is mostly water. You are mostly water. And so I love that this story about Jesus connects us to that fact that we need water to survive. We need water to survive. So dear ones, know that you are filled with God's spirit, with the breath of life, with the water of life. And as you sit in that knowledge, as you trust in that promise, how can you respond? How can you respond to that promise for you? Perhaps you're ready to give generously of time or talent or treasure. Perhaps you're ready to be baptized or join this church or whatever it is. Perhaps you're ready to think about how you can participate in ministry in a new way. How can you respond? The time of offering is one that is opportunity. It is a highlight. You may drop a gift in the box on your way out of the sanctuary or you may give online. You may pray with us, join for Bible study, join for contemplative prayer, lift one another up in prayer throughout the week. There are many ways to respond to God's love for you. You only have to do it. It's a challenge to be God's people. But when you sit and know that you are loved, I hope you can't help it. May it be so. Amen. Let's stand and sing the remaining verses of what was your vow and vision. Children of God, whether you are worshiping online or here with us, go out into the world. Know that the light of Epiphany is shining through you. Connect. Connect with God, with Christ. Take time for prayer. Let the Holy Spirit move. And may you be a blessing in this world as you are blessed. Go in peace. Amen.